story in Brussels continues to expand. The one suicide bomber who some say chickened out, who was still alive and was captured, is now no longer fighting extradition from Belgium to France. He wants out of Belgium right away. He may be afraid for his life because he didn't follow through with his alleged part in the conspiracy, which left 34 dead and lots of folks hurt, some of whom are going to die. Maybe more died today. I haven't checked the latest stats on that. The biggest story, probably, in addition to what we have seen, and a story that really may well eclipse the bombing itself, both bombings, by light years, is the story that a nuclear power plant in Belgium was evacuated after somebody in the terrorist organization indicated that they had planned to attack a nuclear power plant in Belgium and blow it up, at least try to, and cause a nuclear meltdown. This is a huge story. Millions could have died. Maybe tens of millions. We don't know. It's something that is so big that the mainstream media here is just not touching it. No big surprise. We're very fortunate to have with us this first hour, Scott Portsline, who has been since 1984 involved in counterterrorist research in terms of nuclear power plant safety. He knows more about anti-terror than anyone I know and maybe anyone out there. He is uh, remarkably proficient and knowledgeable in this field, and we've got him on this first hour to bring us up to date. Scott, as bad as the, the bombings were in Brussels, how bad could it have been had they gone through with their nuclear power plant attack plans? Welcome to the program. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you for the compliment. Uh, It could have been devastating because to knock out a nuclear plant and release the contents, just like in Fukushima, can destroy your entire country. It can cause, in the United States, uh, even a dirty bomb attack on, say, three cities would be a trillion dollars just to clean it up. That doesn't count the loss of economics. Well, the same thing would happen to what is basically the capital of the European Union, Brussels. Wow. Okay. When they talk about nailing a nuclear power plant, exploding a device there, what would they likely do? What would their target be? We know that nuclear power plants just are not protected. (laughs) You and I used to talk about that 15 years ago or longer. Yes going back into the 90s. Well, I don't want to say too much because uh, you can be accused of giving away secrets, but these two targets are already well known, and especially by terrorists, some of whom are engineers. So you would want to uh, fracture the coolant piping, and another target is the spent fuel pools. Many of those pools are... They're, they're, They're outside. They're sitting in the ground like a swimming pool. Well, the Cascar, yeah, but they, and you're right there, only uh, protected by a tin roof and some concrete walls, which would easily crack under a uh, large bomb. And once you crack open the uh, cement wall or knock it down, there's no way you can retain water anymore. And no water, and I think most of us know what happens, criticality uh, is just around the corner. Uh, temperatures rise. Uh, it's not criticality than a fire. At least and, a, a nu- yeah, a pyroclastic fire, yeah. Yeah, and the release of rutium and hundreds of other isotopes. Hundreds See? of isotopes. We always hear about cesium-134, 137, uh, some other elements, but there are actually, from Fukushima, a, a, hundreds of different oh, yeah. isotopes. Yeah, and some of them are more dangerous than others, and some of them interact with the body more than others, and some of them lodge inside your lungs in, and then get into your bloodstream. Right. So what we saw here at Three Mile Island was uh, a release of noble gases. Well, the word was noble gases don't like to react with other chemicals, but if it lodges in your lungs like radon, a noble grass, gas, the... Uh, uh, I forget what how how large it is in causing cancer deaths. It's like the second or third 
on the list for causing lung cancer deaths in the United States. Hmm. Uh, well, we know that uh, Fukushima uh, spewed an enormous plume uh, within the first week of the explosions and meltdowns, and it came over uh, North America. It, yeah, it was, was measured p- here in Pennsylvania. Even. It was picked up in New Mexico three days after the explosion and meltdown. It was picked up in Pennsylvania. It was picked up in the dairy cattle milk from Vermont. It was all over the place. Uh, there are several experts who have said the people living in Seattle and Vancouver, British Columbia, but especially Seattle and northern Washington, were inhaling up to six radioactive hot particles a day for about a week and a half. Now, any one of those particles can kill you. This, this, and no one's talking about this stuff. Yeah, it's uh, a, a very sad issue because the peaceful use of nuclear energy is about to end. The, this dream of uh, endless energy and clean, we're about to find out it's uh, the genie is out of the bottle. It's been out of the bottle with the idea of dirty bombs and nuclear accidents. But now we're facing very near now to the threat of nuclear terrorism. The closest we've come besides some attacks on some reactors while they were under construction, one of them being in France, mm-hmm. would be the Chechen rebels burying uh, cesium-137 in Gorky Park and threatening to blow it up. They did not blow it up, but they did bury it, and they, uh, the Russians found it. This is amazing. Well. We used to talk, uh, Scott used to come on a lot in the, in the days when we were discussing these things, but they seem to have just faded out of the news. Not out of Scott's life, he's still been at this, again, well over 30 years. The idea that I used to present to people is, you put some C4 in a Cessna 150, and what's to stop you from flying into practically the nuclear power plant of your choice? There's nothing to stop you. There's not even a no-fly zone around U.S. nuclear plants. No kidding. Not even a 10-mile radius, a 5-mile, not even a 1-mile radius. Nothing. Right. The Harrisburg International Airport is two and a half miles from Three Mile Island. So a jet would transverse that distance in 30 seconds. See, and uh, let, let me just digress a little bit here. 9-11, the terrorists the alleged Saudi hijackers who hated America, wanted the great Satan to die. If they wanted to destroy this country, where would they have flown those, those jets, allegedly? They, they were on remote control. They weren't the passenger airliners, in my opinion. But where would they have flown those jets, folks, if they wanted to destroy the great Satan? They had three, four flying bombs, big-time bombs. Where would they have flown those jets? They would have flown them into the four nearest nuclear power plants they could get to and destroy them. And they did fly right over Indian Point. Uh, The one that crashed first into the World Trade Center flew right over top of Indian Point. Wow. The one that went down here in Pennsylvania uh, was believed uh, initially to be headed for Three Mile Island, but uh, that was just rumors, thankfully, and it turned out that the White House or the Pentagon was supposedly the target. But when you're talking about what's to stop somebody from flying into a nuclear plant, uh, what's to stop somebody from taking a high explosive, putting it on a small drone plane? I've seen radio-controlled airplanes with a wingspan of 6 feet, 8 feet, 10 feet. You can make it whatever size you want. And if it's $300 to get the radio-controlled gear to uh, fly it and put that into a nuclear plant. There's nothing going to stop that. Now, I talked to Raytheon Corporation years ago about what's called the enclosed weapon system, the phalanx gun that they use on some Navy vessels to shoot down missiles on their way into an aircraft carrier. By the way, that whole warfare scenario is changing rapidly now because our enemy's missiles are so fast, supersonic speeds now, that those phalanx systems don't get the job done anymore. No. But these systems could have been put around our nuclear plants in the United States. It would be expensive to run. It would cost $1 million a year for each one of them. If they ever had to use them, there would be collateral damage. But they would get the job done against uh, uh, aircraft. So 
one of the first things that I talked about uh, publicly in an old U.S. News and World Report magazine was some of the threats that I was concerned about, truck bombs, commando attacks. And the reporter asked me, what about a drone flying into a nuclear plant, a radio-controlled airplane that right. actually be used? And I said, now you're reading my mind. I said, oh, when, yeah. I first, I, I, when I first was water skiing outside of Three Ball Island, we thought about what would happen if somebody would fly an explosive-laden radio-controlled airplane into the cooling towers at Three Mile Island. Well, it turns out the cooling towers aren't uh, going to create a meltdown if they are knocked down. But uh, the whole idea of radio-controlled airplanes has been picked up on by al-Qaeda and other terrorists because uh, they were training with uh, radio-controlled vehicles, four-wheeled vehicles, near the Pickering nuclear plants in Toronto, Canada, where there are eight nuclear plants at one facility. And that worries me very much, because to have an al-Qaeda sail that close to the nuclear plants really gets my attention, as we here at Three Mile Island did in 1993 with Ramsey Yosef's men training 30 miles from Three Mile Island. And then they bombed the World Trade Center in 1993. But now getting back to Belgium yeah. with the uh, drones, in the last two years, this, mm -hmm. there's been more than 20 incidents of very sophisticated drones flying over nuclear plants in Belgium and France. I've, and, I've carried stories of just a few of those, just a few, not over 20, though. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's bad because I find this incredibly hard to believe that the French... Air Force or police or somebody can't capture or disrupt these drones. Why can't they take them down electronically? Why can't they take them down with a helicopter flying in and just, you know, disrupting their uh, air to right. make them crash? Right. So something's right. up there. And the French are worried, and of course the Belgians now too, that the terrorists might be flying these drones. They did arrest some people. Uh, nearby the one French plant, uh, Greenpeace people. But uh -huh. the Greenpeace had nothing to do with it, and that's what the French investigators concluded. So it really does appear that the surveillance has been going on at nuclear power plants by ISIS, by the two brothers who did their suicide attacks on the metro and at the airport. Right. The back Rowey brothers. What's their name? Right. Here's the story uh, from Belgium uh, yesterday. Belgian media said Monday morning, now this is Monday morning, that the Belgian T-I-H-A-N-G-E, Tihange, I guess, nuclear power plant uh, was evacuated of non-essential personnel in response to the terrorist attacks, the two bombings in Brussels. The police have evacuated the Tehange nuclear station, said VTM, claiming it learned the news from police sources. VTM is a, a news service. Tehange is one of two nuclear power plants, two in Belgium, and approximately one hour's drive from Brussels. Originally, it was believed the entire nuclear facility was being evacuated, but the news was later corrected, and only non-essential staff were removed. These precautionary measures came after Belgian authorities found out what appeared to be video surveillance footage of a, now get this one, a top Belgian nuclear official in the apartment of Mohamed Bakali, who was arrested for alleged involvement in the Paris attacks in November of last year. This is nuts. Edwin Lyman, a senior scientist at the Union of Concerned Scientists, warned the Daily Caller News Foundation in February a potential attack on a Belgian nuclear facility would be catastrophic, though rather difficult to pull off. A terrorist attack, he said, on a nuclear power plant could conceivably result in an event as catastrophic as the severe accident at Chernobyl or even Fukushima. I don't know if it could surpass Fukushima, which is going to be around with us for, they say, hundreds of years. 
Uh, it's not clear to me, said Lyman, what information they could glean from the surveillance of the home of a nuclear official alone unless they were planning to kidnap him and extract information. This is weird. What would a top nuclear official be doing in an apartment of one of these Muslim terrorists? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. He could have been blackmailed. He could anything, be a, anything. Uh, I know Ed Lyman, and he's hedging his statements a little bit. I see. Part because, partly because he is entitled to some uh, classified materials. Uh huh. And so, while trying to alert people how vulnerable these nuclear plants actually are, he is also trying to persuade some would be attackers that that's not going to be an easy job. Well, in the United States, even after 9 11, some of our nuclear plants were breached within minutes, one within 15 seconds. They, 15, they seconds. 15, 15 seconds. 15 seconds. To simulate causing a meltdown with explosives. You can hold your breath for nearly a minute, most people, without any real practice. That's sure. that's not much time, Scott. We're talking no. with Scott Portsline about the very real danger. All American nuclear power plants do not have a no-fly zone. They're wide open. You know, even if they did have a no-fly zone, somebody wanted to penetrate it, they would. they just fly right through it. At yeah, ground nothing level, to stop them. nothing. No, there's no no surface-to-air missiles, no phalanx guns, nothing, nothing. These are bo- no. these are bombs. That's why I kept saying 9/11 is bogus on so many accounts. I said this very early on, uh, maybe a day or two after. I said, wait a minute. If these people wanted to harm the great Satan, they wouldn't make a symbolic gesture. They would go for the throat, and they'd go for nuclear plants, and they didn't. So at least that I shouldn't say they didn't. The plan wasn't for nuclear plants to be destroyed because it was a completely contrived inside job. Anyway, go ahead, Scott. Tell me more about the, these these plants. Europe, America, it doesn't seem to matter much. They're all equally as accessible. Uh, you just mentioned something very interesting about the Belgian nuclear official maybe have been uh, having been blackmailed. That's easy to do with people. It's sure. not hard at all. And if you kidnap somebody like that, you're going to place his co-workers at the nuclear facility or at nuclear plants into the position where they have to make, make life or death situations. And hopefully the uh, workers will not sympathize enough and that man will be lost. In fact, here in the United States, security guards at nuclear plants have to sign an agreement that the company is not responsible for the loss of their life and not responsible for re- rescuing them during a an attack by commandos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, why do you think that evac- the evacuation of non-essential personnel took place at the reactors in Belgium? The answer is they were worried that they were insiders who were threatening that had the insider threat. In other words, they know for a fact that they didn't check out their backgrounds properly. They don't have a good fitness for duty program. And one of the uh, workers uh, at the Dole reactor in Belgium went on to fight in Syria with ISIS. And he was involved with the now defunct radical movement bent on converting the, the Belgian state to an independent Islamic state. So they, when they heard these threats were real, decided we better reduce our own numbers because they may be the terrorists. That's a, that's just astounding to me. Uh, totally, uh, <laughs> the whole thing's astounding. These these plants are, in, in my opinion, and and we do know these people to be completely insane. Anybody who would strap on an explosive belt and and blow themselves to to pieces could do anything, anything. I mean, that's the ultimate act of uh, barbarism and and savagery. 